بسم اللہ الرحمٰن رحیم میں اسلام علیکم پاکستان ویلکم بیک ٹو کارپوریٹ گورننس اینڈ وی آر ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ ویری انٹرسٹنگ ایریا وچ از ایڈورٹائزنگ ان دا کانٹیکسٹ آف رول آف میڈیا ان کارپوریٹ گورننس اینڈ ایڈورٹائزنگ از از سچ ایریا ویئر بائی اٹ کین بی ڈن پازیٹولی اور اٹ کین بی ڈن نیگیٹولی اٹ کین ہیو پازیٹو امپلیکیشنز اور اٹ کین ہیو نیگیٹو امپلیکیشنز اٹ کین مولڈ پازیٹو پرسپشنز اور اٹ کین کریٹ اے لاٹ آف ایڈورسٹی Uh, and a lot of exploitation and a lot of discrimination and it can also uh, tend to uh, mold perceptions uh, so again advertising uh, is uh, is is a psychological weapon in one context and secondly uh, it can be used uh, as uh, a mode uh, of uh, information uh, so that people are aware of the products and services of a particular institution uh, now we are going to be looking at the adverse effects of advertising and see that uh, how advertising can have an adverse effect on individuals and therefore also uh, on the institution which is doing the advertising. And the first most important thing is deception. Uh, a deceptive advertisement is one in which a material untruth is hinted at. Uh, the use of a secondary meaning of a word is also considered as deceptive. So uh, just like I was earlier mentioning uh, that in the case of one particular uh, company, Uh, which used to sell ice cream, but their product did not have any any milk in it or any cream uh, element in it. So it was deceptive uh, because even though they were using the word ice cream, but it was not ice cream. So it was basically an ice dessert. So they had to, uh, based upon a court order, they had to uh, eliminate the word uh, of uh, ice cream uh, on their advertisements and on their products because it was more uh, deceptive. Similarly, uh, when we are talking about Uh, many milk brands which are in Pakistan, uh, they are not uh, 100% milk, but they are labeled as milk. And again, they are deceptive because uh, the proper wording is not given and they could have uh, other elements uh, within it uh, with some component of milk, but uh, branding it as, as pure milk, that is also wrong. And similarly, when we look at juices, we look at uh, other products. So uh, there is a lot of deception which tends to take place and there is a great need Uh, that there should be uh, a regulation and laws implemented against such things because the customer is being deceived. Uh, fear appeals. The intent of fear appeal is to create anxiety in the minds of the consumer. Fear provokes him or her to make use of a particular product to alleviate the fear in him or her. And this is what has been seen in COVID. I mean, uh, just see how, uh, uh, how sanitizers have sold. I mean, uh, they have sold like water uh, in, the, in the past two years. Everyone has become an addict of, of, of using sanitizer all the time. using it multiple times. Uh, see uh, how uh, other related products uh, like masks have sold, uh, how uh, we have seen uh, that uh, other uh, medicines have sold uh, and wrongly been sold because uh, through those fear appeals, people have been uh, flocking towards all of these products and all of these services. And therefore, uh, through that of fear of COVID, we have seen that how uh, a multi, multi, multi billion uh, dollar industry Uh, has basically flourished across the world uh, and through multiple products uh, which basically uh, are uh, countering that fear and that fear is of COVID. Advertising to children. Uh, most of the advertisements such as those for chocolates and ice creams are directed at children. Children between ages of 2 and 11 spend at least 3 hours a day watching television. They do not understand the selling intent of commercials and cannot distinguish between fantasy and reality and so because they have very soft minds and therefore Uh, they can be psychologically swayed. Therefore, these advertisement uh, companies and these different institutions are catering to their needs and are basically bombarding them uh, with different uh, psychological aspects of their product and therefore are swaying them and actually misleading them. So one has to be very careful, uh, especially in that context, because it can lead to many uh, illnesses and ill health and also uh, negative consequences uh, for uh, the children in their later uh, years also. So that is Uh, very important and that must also be controlled. Um, another aspect is materialism. Materialism is defined uh, as a tendency to give undue importance to material interests and objects. The message of television advertising is that the acquisition of a few things will gratify basic needs and aspirations. So uh, what is done is that the need is being created that without that uh, we cannot do something. It's, it's being done uh, for example in digital games. I mean uh, the new generation just cannot live without it. So uh, they basically are selling or it is being done in mobile phones, so, so expensive mobile phones, uh, people uh, buy beyond their means uh, to have those 
uh, mobile phones because they are marketed and advertised in such a way and similarly in other household products. So uh, even though it's not a need, uh, but through the advertising, uh, it becomes a need. And again, a material comparison uh, between different uh, segments of society and it becomes a status symbol, which again uh, has its own negative repercussions at different levels. Uh, then uh, promoting stereotypes. Uh, there is an accusation that advertising has contributed to the role of stereotyping of women. Nearly 90% of the advertisements show women as a housewife. So again, uh, they stereotype and they put uh, a particular segment of society in one particular place. And just like uh, I was mentioning, uh, women un unfortunately uh, are stereotyped in that in most advertisements. And uh, besides that, we also see uh, based upon color, uh, a very famous, uh, a very famous um, product of a very large multinational company uh, that cream used to uh, cater to, uh, to whiteness. And uh, that was also stereotyping uh, the fact that uh, a white person is superior. So uh, that perception was there, but uh, because uh, of a backlash, uh, that, that product had to uh, change its brand name and also uh, do away with the uh, white color stereotyping. So these different type of examples are there. Competitive advertising is basically when two brands are compared. Uh, comparative advertising can lead to consumer confusion and is ethically questionable that uh, should this even be allowed uh, or is it uh, sorry or is it uh, that we can compare both products but it should be done uh, through a justifiable and honest approach and uh, most of the other products should be cloaked so that uh, there is not a direct comparison but there is actually an indirect comparison uh, increasing cost advertisement that provide information to the consumers about the existence of certain products indirectly increase the final cost of a product. So uh, the advertisement cost is uh, loaded on the product and therefore the ultimate burden of the cost is passed on to the consumer and therefore something which might have costed uh, let's say $100 would eventually end up costing uh, $1000 and that has been seen in many products whereby uh, organizations are having phenomenal profits which again is very unethical that uh, there should be a, a rationale and there should be uh, some limits to profitability and through advertisement uh, they make uh, a simple product sell at a very, very high price, which uh, again uh, has its own implications. Um, exploiting visual appeals, uh, well, in that we see that men basically uh, succumb to visual appeals. Uh, the using of uh, bathing beauties to attract men's attention is ubiquitous and uh, that can be seen everywhere. We see on the billboard, we see on magazines, we see on the TV, we see on social media uh, that how, uh, again, women uh, are stereotyped and uh, are projected as visual, visual appeals. Uh, and uh, television advertisements strongly influence both the sexes. So again, uh, the TV ads uh, are affecting both and these visual appeals tend to sway the decision uh, of the customer or the consumer. Uh, then there's another approach which is called uh, I'm the best. Uh, nearly all advertisements contain some measure of exaggeration. The buyers get carried away by these tall claims uh, and make purchases. So again, the product is not that effective, but the advertisement is being hyperbolic and therefore uh, tends to influence uh, the customer uh, to buy their particular uh, product. Uh, absence of full disclosure is again a form of uh, deception and we see that not everything uh, is written uh, on the product and uh, it can uh, lead to uh, misconception and misguiding the customer and consumer. And for example, we can see it in all the cooking oils that all the information is not being provided and only the positive side is being uh, provided, not the negative one and therefore uh, the customer gets swayed. Uh, to buy that particular product. Celebrities are used and again the celebrities tend to sway the perception of the customer and consumer uh, because the person is influenced by that particular celebrity and therefore when the celebrity is using their product then they also uh, tend to uh, buy those different products. A better approach would be uh, ladies and gentlemen that no offense uh, to generally accepted norms of public decency, truthfulness and honesty in claims and representations, no discriminate use of advertising uh, for products which are hazardous to society or to the individual. Um, no references to eminent personalities or political figures and the use of national emblems uh, should be permitted. Um, respect for the principles of fair competition generally accepted in business during comparative advertisement. So uh, these are the things which can be done in a better way. And uh, we can regulate advertisements uh, of different organizations so that uh, they are not abused or misused uh, and customers uh, are not misguided or are led to purchase things which they don't even need. So that is extremely important. That would create a more healthy uh, business environment and a better uh, corporate environment uh, within that particular institution. Thank you so much.